Welcome to the Semiconductor Insiders podcast series. The goal of this podcast is to bring semiconductor experts together to get to the truth about the matter at hand. We'll get right to the point and not exceed 30 minutes of your time. If you have a topic you would like us to cover, please post it on semiwiki.com and we'll get right to it. Today's podcast is the first in a series on AI chips. Uh, this one will talk about AI on the edge. With me is my podcast partner, Mike Gianfagna. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Dan. Our guest today is semiconductor veteran Rob Telson, who is currently VP of Sales and Marketing at BrainChip. Uh, before BrainChip, Rob spent time with Cadence, Arm, and Synopsys, so he's one of us. Uh, good morning, Rob, and welcome to our podcast. Yeah. Good morning, guys. I, I appreciate you having me on this podcast. Okay, Rob, so first let's start with uh, how you originally came to semiconductors and what brought you to BrainChip. Yeah, two good questions. Um, I've been in the industry for a while. Uh, by accident. Uh, I started at Cadence back in the 90s, and it was through a, a bar conversation with a guy that I, I barely knew from college, and uh, he found me at a bar in LA and uh, said, hey, Rob Telson, I've heard about you, and, and he was actually a headhunter, and he said, I've got this position open at a company called Cadence, and I think you would be great. And so we started talking and before I knew it, I was, uh, you know, working for Cadence and uh, uh, learning about place and route tools, learning about PC, PCB tools. And, and that, that started the, 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 you know, my career in the, what, for what you say, the semiconductor space and moved on into IP, uh, worked for a couple of startups where we were very successful and uh, eventually ended up at ARM. Uh, in some senior management roles, and uh, then over to Synopsys for another senior management role, and and that led me to wanting to get back into, uh, let's just say, working in a startup environment, a young environment where you know there's a lot of action, a lot of activity. It just so happened in the past uh, I had done business with Anil Mankar. Uh, and Neil is one of the founders of BrainChip, and and so we were having a conversation, and he had mentioned that uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on at BrainChip, and when I looked under the hood and started to take a look at the technology and what the, what they've done at the company, uh, I realized that uh, you know there there's some exciting things going on here, and I want to be a part of it. Uh, so lo and behold, uh, I've been uh, at BrainChip now for about a year, and. Uh, building a, a sales and marketing organization and having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, I tell you, that that's the thing about the semiconductor industry that I really appreciate is startups. You know, I've been doing startups most of my career. Mike has as well. Uh, and they keep us young, you know, and, and keep things exciting and interesting. So I, I, I know the lure of, of the startup. So tell us about BrainChip. What is the backstory here? Yeah, you know, BrainChip is, is, is an awesome company and we're doing some really, really exciting things in the world of AI. And what we've done is we've developed an, an AI processor that's focused on the edge. And the main focus that we see is that there is a massive problem that's developing in the world of edge applications or edge devices, or also known as IoT devices. And what we see happening out there is that all of these devices are becoming, um, let's say, uh, for lack of a better term, smarter and smarter. And as these devices become smarter and smarter, and we think of edge devices right now as wearables, you know, consumer products, uh, the Alexas, the phones, the watches, but the edge devices are really, when you start to look at what's going on in the industry, um, vehicles, uh, drones, unmanned aircraft, uh, industrial applications, cameras, and so on, uh, all of these devices are collecting data, taking that data, and right now they're driving it to the cloud. And then it's going back to the device where it's 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 then responding. Very sim, you know, a very simple way of looking at it is Siri on a on a phone or one of the assistants, I should say. Basically, you you ask it a question, and a majority of the time it provides you with an answer. But there are times when it tells you it's unavailable. And we see this massive problem occurring right now uh, over the next three to five years where there is gonna be so much data being driven from edge devices to the cloud and back, it's going to basically be a traffic jam. There's gonna be massive competition of bandwidth competing for resources. 
uh, making and forcing devices to react slower. Uh, the massive communication between the devices and the cloud is going to open up um, privacy and security threats. And what we're also seeing is the demand for each of us to want some type of personalization or customization on the device. And so when we see this in the industrial world or more in the, the, um, the manufacturing space and the, 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 the automotive space, this is personalization on these devices where we're making changes on the fly. Uh, and so we see all of these dynamics happening, and that's where Akita comes into play. Akita is BrainChip's processor, uh, and we truly believe that we have a product that can solve a lot of these problems. Because when we look at AI on the edge, we don't think of it as running at the cloud. We look at it on the device, right at the sensor. And our whole objective is to make the sensor smarter. But in order to do that, when you're working with edge devices, um, you, you are forced with an extremely low power budget, and, but the demand for real-time performance, and you have to really operate in some severe design constraints because of memory capacity and bandwidth. So, so we look at these things and we say, gosh, you know, there, there's a need to solve this problem. And a, there are a lot of really good AI applications out there, but none of them solve the problem where you're where you're you're processing in microwatts to milliwatts and the other thing is being able to do real-time learning or customization or training on the device without using the cloud and that's really brain chips uh, unique differentiator is that we can do this edge device learning um, without depending on the cloud without retraining a network and for our listeners out there um, some of these networks will take a data set and a network combined, uh, a, man, a year's worth of engineering man effort to get it optimized correctly. So being able to add some type of personalization, add an image, um, add a sound, add a smell, add a vibration to some, some network that already exists right on the device, uh, that's massive. And that's what we're doing with Akita. Great, great explanation. Uh, so wh where are you guys at with Akita? So uh, good question. Uh, we're, these are, I like to say this a lot, guys. I say these are exciting times and we're just at the tip of the iceberg. So I've done a ton of podcasts and we actually have our own brain chip podcast. So, so uh, for any of the listeners that, uh, that, are, that have listened to some of the other podcasts, you, you've just smiled because you've heard me say that before. But the, the truth of the matter is um, we have just gotten our production part back. Uh, we're in the, the process of doing some of the internal testing ourselves, and we're at a point where uh, we'll be going to uh, commercialization and um, focused on, on Akita, uh, delivering it both as IP and as chips and development systems uh, over the, uh, you know, in the short period of time here. So, Rob, with all the AI products in the market, and it's a hot market. There's a, it's getting to be a crowded field with lots of different approaches, lots of different technologies, some more exotic than other and so forth. What's the differentiation for BrainTrip? How do you guys set yourself apart? Yeah, good question. Uh, again, I'm gonna highlight the fact that, that we are, you know, we're, we're basically operating at very limited power. It's funny because we had a customer talked to us about a competitive solution and they were they wanted to do three different AI functions they needed three different chips and they needed to put some fans around the solution in order to cool things off and we were we were kind of looking at them scratching our heads saying you know Akita is going to be able to do all these function functions on the same device and we're going to be you know in the milliwatts when complete power usage there's no need for any type of fan for this solution. And so we see that, that the, the amount of power that we're consuming is minimal. Um, but the, 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 what excites me is the fact that, for example, um, you, know, you want to add something inside your vehicle. Uh, you want to um, add a smell um, or some type of object detection. 
um, you're doing this within you know uh, three to five seconds of doing uh, adding adding something to Akita with its edge-based learning right on the fly. Uh, that's something that really it differentiates us. It, we're not using software to do it. We're doing it on the hardware and it's going to provide a ton of functionality and flexibility uh, to a variety of devices uh, in the future. Yeah, that makes sense. We hear, we hear a lot of stories about things changing and being able to track changes in algorithms, changes in yeah. applications. And if you can do that fast, that's that could be the margin of victory. I get it. So with that as a backdrop for your strengths and how you differentiate, what, what are the target markets that really where you shine? Where, where do you really support um, um, customers best? Yeah, so, so we're focused on four key areas, um, smart city, smart health, smart transportation, and smart home. And of that, we've had a lot of success in the automotive and transportation area. We've had a lot of success in consumer applications, and uh, we've started to penetrate health in a way that that I think we're we're kind of leading in that space when it comes to an AI solution that's you know uh, uh, consuming very little power, uh, allowing for uh, portable applications and solutions that are that are driven you know by ba battery power. Uh, and those are those are areas where uh, we see ourselves making a massive impact. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, clearly the the power angle is going to be important, and there's an awful lot of markets where that and applications where that's critical. So, tell us a little bit about your commercialization strategy. How do you go to market with the product? How do you license it? How does it get integrated? And that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to start at the high end, and then really quickly. Uh, talk about short-term commercialization. So uh, our focus is on licensing our, uh, licensing Akita as IP, and we've had some success doing that. And so uh, we're going to continue to evolve with that model. Uh, Akita is completely configurable, so you could be using a one-node solution, a two-node, an eight-node, a sixteen-node, uh, so a lot, uh, and, and 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 greater than that. So a lot of scalability, as I've said before. Uh, depending on uh, the 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 design and what what uh, companies want to do with it, so licensing it as IP uh, we see is 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 a path to give uh, these companies the the ability to to have um, a flexible solution and scale as they evolve. Uh, we also have um, silicon available, so uh, for those that want Akita in the format that it currently is today, uh, they can go ahead and uh, purchase chips and you know design it in as needed uh, in the short term uh, what will be well as i said before we've got our product back but what will we be doing is is launching our commercialization strategy uh, with development systems and those development systems will be based off of you know uh, uh, both a pc based development system and a raspberry pi development system and then we're going to evolve our commercialization strategy from there but right now we're we're focused in these areas. We'll be, you know, for for uh, the brainship uh, loyalty and our fans and people that are are following our path and our customers and future customers. Uh, as I said before, tip of the iceberg, exciting times, and and there'll be more to our commercialization strategy and messaging uh, over the next uh, uh, few months. You know, Mike, Mike and I both say that exciting times. Uh, we've been around. I mean, this is my 40th year in semiconductors. And I tell you, it hasn't been more exciting than it is today. And I see some really big things coming. And AI is going to touch just about every chip. So uh, you're definitely in the right market. So let's close this out. Um, what, what's next for BrainChip? Yeah, good question. But before we go there, I just want to emphasize, you know, I think you guys were probably uh, uh, ex experience this, you know, Probably five, six years ago, people were talking about the fact that where is the semiconductor industry going? And the fact that, um, you know, there's no innovation, what's going to happen next? And it was kind of this lull. Uh, what's turned over the last few years is absolutely amazing. And uh, with the amount of companies focused on AI and all the data center activity and so on, it's really exciting to see the this next wave happening. 
And uh, that's kind of a plug for, for anyone out there trying to get into the industry because we need as many young people to, be, to continue to think of ideas and develop uh, new applications and technologies as we continue to move forward. But you know, that being said, uh, back to the question, uh, yeah. So I, I said exciting times. Uh, we've got our first product, which is a key to 1000. Um, we have a product roadmap that we see both going to, to um, a more um, scaled down um, consumer application all the way up into more um, uh, heavy lifting products that uh, will be able to do a lot more from a technology standpoint. And we see this roadmap over a few years scaling out. So um, that's exciting because it's, it's not a one trick pony. Uh, there's a lot to this technology. Uh, as I said before, um, at the beginning of this podcast, uh, the guys that founded this company are, are brilliant men and um, they've continued to drive Akita and the, the legacy of Akita that we're, we've got in front of us moving forward. So it's, it's a great to be a part of it. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. If you want to uh, learn more about Brainship, it's uh, www.brainshipinc.com. And I'm sure you can, you know, get a hold of Rob there uh, or listen to his podcast as well. Um, that does it for today. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Rob. And thank you to everybody who tuned in and we'll see you next week. Rob, this was a great discussion. Thanks for joining us. I personally learned a lot in this podcast today. Hey guys, thanks again for having me on this podcast. This was great talking to you. And 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 as, and as mentioned, um, feel free to go to our website, www.brainchip.com or www.brainchipinc.com. Um, also, for those that are really curious, uh, we post everything that we can content-wise on YouTube, and our YouTube channel is Brainchip Inc. So check it out on YouTube. Subscribe to Brainchip on YouTube. And you'll always be updated with all of our new activity that, that goes from there. But I truly appreciate you guys having me on this podcast and look forward to future, future conversations and educating more people on AI in general and uh, especially what BrainShip's doing to impact AI at the edge. So thank you. That concludes our podcast. Thank you all for listening and have a great day.